Cobbiz. Hello and welcome to Cobbiz. My name is Shalin Verma and in today's video we will understand the process to obtain environmental clearance for building and construction projects. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. The EIA notification of 2006 and its subsequent amendments lay down the process of environmental clearance for building construction projects. EIA is required in the case of building construction projects as well as township and area development projects. For the scope of this video, we will focus on the first. To understand the EC process, one must understand the requirements in the EIA in case of building construction projects. Details about the project's nature, size, location and significance to the nation must be given importance here. It is important to provide a detailed description of any applicable local, state and central environmental laws and regulations to the planned activity. Any environmental restrictions or constraints that have been known by the district administration, the state or the central government must be provided even if the project is being expanded or modernized. The applicant first needs to understand the stages in the EIA process in order to obtain the clearance for the project. The first stage is the screening stage. The building construction projects requiring EIA report are termed as category B1 and the remaining projects are termed category B2 and will not require an EIA report. For categorization of projects into B1 and B2 except item 8B, the MOEFCC issues appropriate guidelines from time to time. After the finalization of the concept of the project and site selection, the project proponent has to submit Form 1 and proposed TOR to the CAC. Next is the scoping stage. All projects and activities listed as Category B in the Item A of Schedule does not require scoping and will be appraised on the basis of Form 1 or Form 1A and a conceptual plan. Any project or activity specified in category B will be treated as category A if located in whole or in parts within a 10 km boundary of the following areas. Protected areas notified under the Wildlife Protection Act, critically polluted area identified by the CPCB from time to time, eco-sensitive areas as notified under section 3 of the Environment Protection Act of 1986 and interstate boundaries and international boundaries. The next stage is the preparation of the terms of reference or the TOR. The TOR is designed to address two aspects of item 8B of the EIA notification of 2006. TOR is given in two subsections 1 and 2 in which subsection 1 deals with building construction projects which is equal to 1,50,000 square meters and Subsection 2 that deals with township and area development projects that are equal to 50 hectares. Next is the stage of appraisal. The draft EIA report prepared by the project proponent will either be approved or rejected by the CR. If the draft is approved, the certificate of approval will be displayed on the website of the State Pollution Control Board or the Pollution Control Committee and the website of the project proponent. Lastly, the proponent will be required to adhere to the post clearance compliance and monitoring. The project proponent will also require submission of compliance report every six months. In case of category B projects, irrespective of its clearance by MOEF or CIA, the project proponent will need to prominently advertise in newspaper indicating that the project has been accorded environmental clearance and the details of the MOEF website where it is being displayed. Now let's see the documents that will be needed at the time of environmental clearance for building construction projects. These are the project description, essential top sheet, map to be provided with TOR application, remote sensing, satellite imagery, digital evaluation model or contour map, description of the environment, anticipated environmental impacts and mitigation measures, specific studies on implications such as building material and technology, energy conservation, etc., environmental monitoring program, additional studies like ERA or DMP, and environmental management plan or EMP. After the TOR is approved by the State Expert Appraisal Committee, a draft EIA report must be submitted to the SPCB or the PCC. In the process of obtaining environmental clearance for building construction projects, public hearing is not required. Now, let's talk about the validity of environmental clearance for building construction projects. The EC is granted for these projects with a validity of 7 years in case of construction projects. In case of existing projects, 
whose EC stood valid as on 12/4/2022 were granted an extension of 3 years. However, an application has to be made in the prescribed performa together with an updated form 1 and a supplementary form 1A for construction projects to the regulatory authority as per the EIA notification. The authorities will however consult the EAC or SEAC before the grant of such extension. Now it must be noted that degradation of the nature and ecological balance can affect human health and well-being in addition to placing pressure on the limited natural resources that we have. So in the case of environmental clearance for construction projects proper assistance from certified experts in the EC process can reduce the chances of rejection of the application and also reduce the cost incurred in the whole process so if you are looking for such consultation contact with our seasoned EIA and EC experts from the details shown below we at cobbis can help you obtain all your environmental compliances so this was all for today's video You can like and share this video if you found it informative. You can also stay tuned with our environment clearance series by subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching.